welcome to uh, IPSIS web webinar series okay series number six which is uh, evaluating thesis for master by research uh, this this uh, webinar title will focus on the uh, evaluating for master by research. so our Speaker today will be Assistant Professor IR Dr. Nor Emily Abdul Rashid, Head of uh, Resources Microwave uh, Research Institute from the Faculty of uh, Electrical Engineering. I'm Salahuddin, I will be the moderator for this session. First of all, thank you for IPSIS for organizing the, this kind of session. I know this session, a series of uh, webinars, is very important so that we can improve uh, the quality of our supervision, quality of uh, evaluation, so that many of our students will complete their master or PhD uh, by research uh, on time or before time. Uh, this is an outline uh, of uh, our session for today. We only have one hour and uh, the first part of uh, today's session, we I will cover or will give uh, a bit uh, information about uh, postgraduate, and our number of intake, uh, number of students, what would be the timeline for GOP, uh, DRP, uh, viable status, and number of uh, graduates, our graduate uh, in master and in PhD, and number of them obtain. Uh, GOT. And then the next session after that will be a talk by our speaker, Dr. Emily. And then after that, QA. And then at the end of the session, I will give the link for the attendant and you know, get feedback from you. Okay, first of all, we talk about the number of uh, our postgraduate students. Okay, you look at the the trend for our master and for PhD student. If you look at here, um, from 2016 and 2019, the trend is increasing. But you know, in 2020, because of uh, the situation that we are having nowadays, the number of uh, students you know, drop. Right? Yeah. It's dropping. So. They, we need to have uh, a lot of initiative uh, to, to do the promotion so that the number of students will be increased. Uh, this is the new intake for students for masters and PhD. Okay. We we break this one into faculty, into faculty for masters and for PhD. We have the the, the data from 2006 until 2020, okay, for every faculty. For example, faculty of uh, electrical, here we have uh, for PhD student, okay, uh, 2018, 25, 2019, 46, the number increased, but, you know, because of the situation that we have, the number, the number of students is dropped into 20. Uh, and in total, we have a number of students for PhD in 2020 is 390. And for master student, we have 328. This is the timeline for GOT. Okay, when we say GOT, it means that starting from the physical registration, okay, physical registration until the student obtain the decimatic okay so if you want to have our student to have GAT we have to brief uh, the supervisor uh, in our department or in our faculty so that they can plan the student to follow this timeline this is the suggestion uh, given by uh, our experience uh, to, so that our student will have GOT. So starting from the registration, we have how many steps here? We have one, two, three, up to 
step 9 eh? we have the for master for master we have here uh, starting from uh, the appointment and six months six months they start to do drp and then uh, in the 12 month the this has already been submitted and then uh, this is evaluation okay this evaluation we give six weeks okay six weeks but by have from my experience uh, you know during uh, mco we managed to to get a quick feedback from the panel for evaluation and then student do correction and verification by seminar and then uh, follow the format and then in one month they already have the scenario. Another thing that I think for to improve the number of GOD is we, we can promote a student to do a lot of uh, conversion from master to PhD. Yeah, in my faculty, there are a number of students who uh, did a conversion from master to PhD almost i think uh, i think almost 100 percent they obtain uh, this is the data for students not doing drp okay um, we recommend the student to do drp if the student is uh, if a master student full-time they must do drp in less than six months six months if part-time student is one year and for phd uh, less than one year uh, if uh, he or she is a full-time student and for part-time should not exceed 18 months okay this is the viva status okay we, we bring it into the faculty so the uh, Every faculty we have here, for example, applied science AAS here, okay, uh, the green in, in the, uh, the duration, uh, the duration uh, viva, okay, from uh, January to 18, July, 8 of July 2020. This is the results of Okay, of uh, student who's obtaining uh, what are the result? Minor correction, major correction, minor correction. Okay, uh, this is the major correction. Okay, last slide that I would like to highlight here is a uh, number of graduates. Okay, if you look at a number of graduates that we are having here for master student. Okay, um, for 2019 we have. 290 for masters and 238 for PhD. Okay, for this year, as of uh, 8 of July, the number are still very low. And uh, the comment about IGOT for PhD is higher uh, compared to IGOT for masters. So that's why I think we need to do something, okay, so that uh, we can increase uh, the number of IGOT okay, for masters. Okay, to increase, okay, to certain percentage, uh, more than 10%, I think, uh, will be preferable, okay. And for PhD also, you can increase the number of IGOT. Okay, the second part of uh, today's session will be the, the lecture, okay, given for me to introduce uh, to introduce about the speaker, okay, her name is uh, Associate Professor I R Lutenor Emilin Abdul Rashid. Okay, she is a lecturer at of uh, Medical Engineering. Okay, previously she is the head center of uh, postgraduate study of FAE. Right now she is uh, head of resources uh, micro research institute. Okay, her background is in electrical engineering. Okay. She did a lot of uh, volunteer work and leadership, and she is super in terms of supervision. She has a number of students okay, under her supervision in PhD and also in master, and she have uh, evaluated uh, uh, more than five uh, master and PhD theses. I think uh, she is the right person uh, 
to share for us about um, her vast experience in uh, in, in a topic for today we, we focus on evaluation of uh, master disease without further ado i would like to invite dr emilian to to share her experience and her presentation Thank you, Dr. Tu, and very good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Salamudin from FPM, for uh, being the moderator. Um, hold on, let me see. Let me share my presentation slide. Okay. All right, um, so the topic that has been given to me is evaluating thesis for master by research, uh, specifically for engineering and science. So uh, again, my name is uh, Noor Emily Abdul Rashid. Right now, uh, I'm a member of my career research institute. So when we talk about thesis, okay, before that, kita, uh, I mean, this session kita buat santai sikit lah, yeah? Um, bila kita cakap pasal thesis, when we talk about thesis ni, we we have to, the first thing is that we have to differentiate between master thesis and PhD thesis. So, we know that because most of us uh, memang dah ada PhD. So, we know that for PhD, there are demands for originality. Uh, one of the criteria is uh, demand of originality in your thesis. But this criteria is not for master thesis. So kalau kita tengok kat sini, Brooke and Hal Brooke 2013 ni dia cakap, the lack of expectation of virginity in master thesis has been maintained institutionally, while master thesis might not contribu contribute to knowledge of uh, in the discipline, there are limitation in new research. So kalau uh, based on my experience dekat electrical engineering lah, bila saya tengok uh, thesis master and thesis PhD. I, I used to be KPPS dekat FKE from 2017 until 2019. So normally when we receive reports from examiners, whether it's master and PhD thesis, dekat situ kita akan uh, go through the report. So basically uh, kita boleh differentiate between master and thesis punya PhD dekat situ. So kalau masa punya thesis kalau in electrical department so basically if let's say you have a system uh, you uh, apa nama ni uh, have a new method in a certain area tu that is enough for master for me like that is enough for master but for PhD ni you kena buat daripada fundamental and then you have to do some simulation uh, measurement and then you have to develop uh, some algorithm in order for you to analyze the uh, data, the signals and everything. So dekat situ, basically PhD, you contribute to a new thing. So macam new configuration ke, new method ke, new um, analysis, new knowledge, new findings, semua itu untuk PhD. But for master, it's enough. Uh, there are certain area enough just simulation. There are certain uh, area pula, dia enough just for let's say you're using a new method. So, semua, semua tu depends pada area masing-masing. I cannot say that uh, you, uh, untuk master you have to specifically have this criteria. I cannot say that because semua tu bergantung kepada area masing-masing and depends on the examiner itself. Okay. Uh, well, most students, uh, they are mystified by the process of examination. Because students, they have no idea what examiners look for in research or master or doctorate thesis ni. So, macam kita as a supervisor and examiner pun, we are less uh, mystified by how a written thesis is mine. Because basically, apa yang kita buat ialah kita uh, buat ialah based on our experience. Macam saya, uh, like myself, Saya punya master is not in research. Saya, saya master in uh, coursework. So, saya tak ada pengalaman untuk write thesis master. 
but based on experience, based on uh, saya punya student, based on report yang saya baca, saya pernah jadi uh, chair for the Viva, then kita somehow kita boleh macam, this is like a puzzle, you try to uh, fix puzzle to jadi nicely and dekat situ sebenarnya you try to uh, apa nama uh, dengan punya thesis ataupun dekat situ pun you boleh develop your own expectation bila you examine the thesis so kalau tengok Golding ni dia cakap uh, knowledge of the what examiners do is like most supervisor is based on personal experience of examining thesis observing how many how my thesis student were examined and it talks about the examination process and also dia kata the knowledge ni is macam tadi saya cakap lah, it's a partial and incomplete because you tak boleh challenge the experience that other examiners have dengan kita punya experience or I punya experience dengan you punya experience okay so apa yang kita boleh buat adalah um, kita bila kita pergi jadi examiner or kita evaluate thesis or I think sekarang ni kalau those who doesn't have experience yang ada graduate students master or PhD um, bila Viva normally kalau tak silap saya lah kalau dulu prosesnya memang kita akan invite uh, this young lecturers yang baru balik PhD to be the minute taker for Viva sebab so, from there they can uh, gain experience on how we evaluate the thesis the examiner evaluate thesis and how the thesis should look like so whether it's master or PhD lah okay uh, so back to kita punya own topic, what do examiners look for when they assess the thesis? So this, uh, ini saya dapat daripada uh, one of the paper yang saya baca. So basically dia kata dalam paper ni because each and every examiners and supervisors have, have different experience. So but this paper dia dah buat 11 generalization examiner practices. So dia kumpul data from uh, beberapa ratus and ribu orang examiners. So dia buat survey semua. So dia try to generalize how um, examiner punya practices ni. So kalau kita tengok kat sini, this is examiner stand to the first one, be broadly consistent. So uh, uh, apa yang dikatakan uh, by be broadly consistent ni is that normally Uh, dia ada consistency in making decision tu. Kalau you tengok report, if uh, kalau if you have uh, apa nama opportunity to read the report untuk um, thesis uh, examiner punya report ni, kalau macam Dr. Salahuddin dia memang uh, I think sebab dia KPPS so dia banyak baca report ni. So basically kebanyakannya report ni dia kalau you tengok dia punya comment konsisten. Dia lebih kurang sama. Cuma inconsistency happen when uh, they are making decision whether to give the student to minor or minor correction to major correction ke no correction ke or fail. Kalau kita compare uh, examiner from UITM dengan from other university because other university ni dia punya um, time for correction ataupun let's say dia punya minor correction tu dia kata minor correction tiga bulan. So bila we invite them to become examiner dekat UITM kalau kita tengok report tu walaupun benda tu tak banyak dia tend to give uh, our students major correction why because dekat dia orang major correction is more than three months but for in our practice dekat UITM um, our apa ni uh, kita untuk minor correction tu we give students six months so bila dia orang tengok uh, dia orang rasa tiga bulan tak cukup dia orang tend to give Uh, six months. So different university will have different dia punya policy and criteria lah. But basically yang inconsistentnya when it comes to decision whether to give result untuk student punya thesis tu. But the rest um, more or less sebenarnya content of the report tu memang more or less the same lah. Okay. The second one expect a thesis to pass. So normally when Uh, apa ni, examiner dapat thesis tu, dia dalam mind dia adalah untuk paskan student tu. So examiners begin reading with curiosity, 
Intuitivism, uh, expecting a thesis to be good and hoping to find the task rewarding and enjoyable. Itu yang kita expect lah daripada PC student. And they know years of effort has gone into a thesis um, and has been judged worthily by the supervisor. So, of course, as a examiner, kita expect that uh, supervisor dah go through the thesis to thoroughly lah. Entah berapa version pun tak tahu. Ada some supervisor sampai 8, 10 version. Ada supervisor yang Alhamdulillah dapat good student satu one ver first version pun dah lepas. But ada yang banyak-banyak kali lah. Even kita pun kalau tengok journal student pun sometimes sampai 10 kali apa ni version of the journal tu kan. So uh, because of um, they trust the supervisor to judge worthily so they anticipate that that uh, the student will pass lah and of course dalam hati dia orang pun they want it to be passed so examiners ni memang reluctant to fail a thesis no matter what lah they try to consider wala apa pun they akan try to find the strength of the thesis tu unless kalau supervisor tu memang ambil uh, apa ni uh, memang dia dah tahu dah that, that the the apa ni track record of the examiner tu memang suka failkan orang uh, memang tu pun namanya cek nak ask sikit lah kan but normally kita tahu supervisor kebanyakannya dia akan uh, cari examiner yang ada integriti yang uh, yang betul-betul layak untuk dia punya apa untuk jadi examiner sebab kita pun uh, kalau you go through the process to uh, apa nama lantik examiner ni kita ada tengok certain certain things kalau macam untuk master ni sebab kita try to give experience to those yang bawa balik PhD yang those yang tak ada uh, apa ni student master so kita uh, apa ni untuk master kita allow macam dalam UITM kita allow untuk uh, kita leskan dia punya kriteria untuk jadi examiner tapi for those yang from outside UITM kita kena make sure that they have uh, orang pernah ada student graduates ataupun uh, they have examined the thesis before this it is master thesis kalau PhD dia punya kelaikan tu examiner tu lain kalau macam sekarang ni dekat FKE uh, we even look at the H index okay so um, Okay, macam tadi saya cakap expect the thesis to pass so even then examiners can get upset if they have uh, to recommend a fail or even a resubmit. So normally even though dia kasi um, major correction pun dia akan cakap oh tak apalah we wait until the viva and then kita akan try to decide balik lah whether the the result tu boleh tend to be minor correction ataupun tak. Untuk major tu pun sebenarnya examiner rasa reluctant nak kasi. Okay. So the third one judge the thesis by the end of the first and second chapter. So examiners make an initial judgment about the quality of the thesis early in their reading. So at least in the first two chapters and sometimes where they skim the abstract, table of contents, introduction and conclusion. So they quickly to decide whether the thesis is likely to be hard work or enjoyable. Uh, enjoyable to read, um, whether it's a threat or endurance test. So kenapa, why they said that introduction and literature review ni are the particularly important in the thesis. So because from there we know whether the candidate knows what they are doing. If the examiner have a good impression, the first uh, impression to they had a good first impression, they feel they can relax and enjoy the thesis. If not, they are uh, they read more critically looking for problems. So the first two chapters ni is very important. So uh, as a supervisor, kita kena main peranan yang penting lah to really really make sure that uh, especially the first uh, chapter yang first chapter tu you have the background study, you have the problem statement, ada objective, ada limitation semua and even dekat uh, belakang tu end of the first chapter tu kita ada summary of each chapter kan. Uh, so itu pun uh, kalau boleh uh, make sure that it's not perfect, it can't be perfect but um, at least 
benda tu enjoyable for the examiner to read sebab dia macam sebenarnya the first chapter ni macam cerita so apa sebenarnya problem kenapa you nak buat macam ni apa sebenarnya you punya hope for that okay so the fourth is uh, read a thesis as an academic reader and uh, as a normal reader so a thesis should be enjoyable uh, enjoyable read in order to sustain an examiner good impressions examiner take a lot of time and effort to access the thesis so kalau dia tak suka then they are likely to judge it to be a poor quality so examiners may read in the evening when they are tired so and it might take two or four days to access two or uh, two to four days or ada yang sampai like two three weeks baru habis baca thesis tu and some examiners they tend to read it several times so sekali tak puas hati kalau macam if like thesis tu memang um, the quality agak teruk dan di apa nama um, jalan cerita dia tak bagus then ada examiner akan dia akan read dua tiga kali benda tu okay for a thesis to be a good read it must meet examiner's academic expectation and the expectation as a normal reader they expect to read a thesis that is academically sound uh, for example engage with the literature has appropriate methodology logical structure they also expect a thesis to be clear interesting polished and easy to follow okay uh, examiners need they expect that um, uh, apa ni they want candidate candidate to make the thesis clear for the examiner convince the examiner and explain the approach conclusion and significance of the research in a way that the thesis uh, the the examiner will understand it okay next is be irritated and distracted by uh, presentation errors ah ini yang the most important kalau saya pun kalau saya baca abstract dekat situ pun dah macam uh, banyak spelling punya error, banyak grammatical error. So saya rasa not uh, as examiner uh, saya akan I tend to be irritated and distracted lah dengan uh, presentation errors. So examiners express a sense of release and pleasure or even surprise when a well presented uh, thesis was accounted. Examiner become distracted, irritated, frustrated and agitated by frequent presentation errors that could have been fixed easily. A few errors, okay. Kalau few errors tu okay lah. Tapi kalau each sentence tu you ada uh, spelling errors, uh, ada grammatical error, ayat pun tunggal langgan dan as an examiner memang you punya first impression tu yang macam oh my god this will be like oral medicis lah. Okay. Uh, Kalau student, so normally student dia rasa that the presentation errors ni might not be important. So macam saya, I tend to ask uh, apa ni, biasanya kita akan, saya akan minta student saya pergi hantar uh, proofread. But again, kebanyakan proofreader ni is not um, apa ni, uh, engineering punya base dia orang kebanyakannya memang orang daripada pusat bahasa semua. So kadang-kadang bila kita buat ayat macam ni, dia ubah ayat tu dah jadi macam lain. So you, uh, you supervisor and student jangan just like terima je macam tu um, ayat yang dia cuba ubah tu. Kena tengok balik. Because uh, dia akan change the meaning of the sentence. Okay. Um, and then favor a coherent thesis. So coherent writing has focus flow and a logical and explicit structure that integrates and connects the various part of the thesis and give clear direction to the reader. So coherent writing often includes signposts and summarize that indicate what is coming, what has been done. So normally, uh, saya suka kalau baca thesis yang uh, at the beginning of the each chapter tu dia ada, dia bagi like uh, preview dulu. Thesis uh, chapter ni pasal apa? So dia dah summarize dah. And at the end of the thesis tu, dia akan uh, buat lagi summarize apa sebenarnya finding yang dia dapat daripada daripada apa nama chapter tu. So itu sebenarnya akan macam sebab kadang-kadang bila kita baca thesis yang tebal, kita tend to get bored and dah 
lupa dah apa benda yang berlaku. So ataupun kita ten mungkin waktu tu kita tengah busy ke atau macam petang kan petang like uh, sleepy sikit kan. So um, nanti kita mungkin terhayal sikit so kita dah termiss out benda tu. So bila ada summary dekat belakang tu kita akan macam oh eh kenapa kita termiss this thing. Uh, so kita akan boleh pergi balik lah tengok oh sebenarnya ada benda ni. Kenapa macam tiba-tiba tadi boleh ter miss lah. Okay. So examiners uh, reading a thesis in chunk over a weeks. So probably uh, bila dia sampai chapter 4 dia dah lupa dah apa yang berlaku kat chapter 2 tadi. So kalau boleh um, thesis tu dia macam um, bila thesis student tu dia nak tengok macam oh ada sikit dia macam ada bukan flashback or call that uh, dia 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 quote balik apa yang berlaku uh, the chapter before. Okay. Uh, and then uh, favor a thesis that engage with the literature. Of course, even kadang-kadang uh, tu um, literature ni memang very important lah. Jangan pula, um, biasanya kita tak suka tengok uh, literature yang tak ada kaitan pun dengan sebab sometimes uh, one thing that saya perasan uh, for SNT ni, dia punya number of uh, apa word counts tu terlalu banyak. 30,000, kalau PhD tak silap saya 30,000. Kalau master saya tak sure lah berapa 20 ke 25,000. So banyak memang memang kalau macam engineering tu because we have you can, kita memang dapat the examiner will get the thesis tu like tebal macam dictionary. But sebenarnya word count ni tak sampai because kita tend to put banyak graph dalam tu. Graph, tables and everything. So Bila kita tulis tu sebenarnya tak banyak. Dia tebal tu because of the picture and uh, graph and tadi apa tables tu. So uh, then apa yang student tend to buat adalah bila dekat literature tu dia akan tulis apa-apa macam-macam dia campur sampai tak ada relate to what uh, yang dia buat sebenarnya. So engagement with the literature tu very important. So kenapa literature tu kita ambil, kenapa um, dia masuk dalam thesis benda tu, apa related benda tu dengan the method and uh, uh, whatever finding yang sepatutnya uh, thesis tu dapat kena ada engagement dekat situ. Okay. <coughs> hmm. Alright. So normally when we get the thesis tu, ini adalah um, examiner's first questions. So Basically, apa yang kita nak adalah uh, we we want to know what, what is the thesis all about. So, what is this is all about? Biasanya apa yang kita dapat kat sini sebenarnya kita dapat daripada abstract. Kita takkan, uh, we will not realize thesis tu pasal apa kalau tak baca the whole thesis. But abstract tu is the most important. So, dekat situ basically dia dah ada, uh, dia dah beritahu dah thesis tu nak apa, apa objektif dia, apa benda method dia dan uh, what is the outcome. So uh, the next question, does it cite the right things? So citation, again citation tadi, literature tadi is very important. So kadang-kadang uh, benda tu tak berkaitan. Macam saya kata tadi, it's not relevant pun. Tapi ada dekat situ. And then all uh, all the pieces there, uh, lengkap tak dia punya tu? Uh, dia kalau macam let's say dia buat experiment, ada tak validation? Uh, ke dia just macam just ambil je result tu and letak macam tu je. Dia tak, tak validate balik dengan other people punya paper or result-result uh, sebelumnya or simulation result ke. And then the last question will be is the argument clear? Sometimes you argue something macam for example uh, uh, one of the my friend lah dia buat something related to um, macam saya tak sure sama ada virus ke, apa ke, or human ke, something like that lah. Tapi uh, like my friend ni dia uh, cuba this, oh sorry fungus. Fungus ni untuk solve something. But at the end sebenarnya fungus ni tak jalan pun. Tapi so dia nak uh, because contribution uh, kepada PhD dia waktu tu adalah nak mengatakan bahawa this fungus cannot be used to uh, this problem statement yang dia ada lah. So dia kena argue untuk uh, make sure that uh, apa yang dia buat tu really suit and uh, agreed by the examiner. So argument tu clear dia 
waktu itulah dia akan uh, balik side balik dia punya literature or uh, dia back to uh, other people punya work ke so argument dekat situ kena clear lah so kalau kita tak agree dengan uh, let's say literature orang ni then we have to argue it clearly kenapa kenapa benda tu menjadi kita punya problem statement okay so uh, these are the criteria uh, assessment criteria so apa yang normally examiners looking at the thesis is uh, the first one is presentation and clarity so kalau kita tengok situ the reader should be able to read the text without difficulty the text should be clear and tell a story the reference list should be accurate and complete the thesis should be adequate length so um, I'm not sure whether uh, 30,000 words to uh, more untuk SNT ataupun um, tak cukup ke macam mana ke tapi I know that most of the students here untuk 30,000 tu 30,000 word counts tu memang susah nak dapat Saya tak sure sebab waktu saya belajar dulu kita kalau lebih daripada 30,000 tu sebenarnya sebenarnya dia maksimum 30,000 untuk SNT kalau dekat universiti saya lah uh, so kalau terlebih kita kena tersurat kata kenapa terlebih lah so adequate length tu um, some examiners walaupun tak cukup pun dia terima je sebab bagi dia is enough okay so the next criteria is integration and coherence so it should be logical and rational links between the components part of the thesis and should be intellectual wholeness in the thesis so bila kita examiner baca thesis so kita nak everything to be smooth so kita tak nak uh, thesis tu melompat dari one part one another part, dia tak ada link pun tiba-tiba dia buat uh, for example tiba-tiba dia buat kalau ke engineering dia buat uh, sorry dia buat simulation guna frekuensi ni tiba-tiba dekat uh, measurement dia guna frekuensi yang ni so different frekuensi dia tak ada link kat situ so macam mana nak link kan dia, dia ni kena buat some arguments mengatakan kenapa dia change the frequency because of imitation of benda ni ke, benda ni ke, benda ni ke so you kena ada kat situ rational links so kalau kita examiner baca benda tu then kita akan rasa annoyed lah sebab because kita akan tertanya kenapa benda ni uh, at first the student uh, cakap they using this and then suddenly they are using this one so kita nak link. So kalau benda tu tak ada integration, kalau tak ada argument dekat situ kenapa benda tu berlaku then uh, the assessment tu jadi tak smooth. And then uh, we are looking also at the contribution to knowledge. So it must be independent research whether master or thesis. Kena independent. So waktu tu lah. Um, here bila kita baca thesis tu kita nak tahu benda-benda tu whether is correct or not, uh, whether student tu boleh jawab ke tak. Uh, itu dekat Viva tu. Uh, we asking Memang kita tahu dalam thesis dia dah cakap dah, okay uh, they're doing this and the justification is like this but waktu viva tu sebenarnya then we know whether benda tu betul tak dibuat if let's say they can answer the questions given during the viva then we know sebenarnya dia memang buat benda tu so kalau if let's say uh, waktu viva tu dia ada macam itu tak tahu ini tak tahu itu then we know that it's not independent research mungkin dia uh, it's okay to have like uh, macam you work in a group and then group ni uh, orang ni buat ni orang ni buat ni tapi mesti walaupun you ada using you using data from uh, the first person ni you kena tahu juga macam mana dia buat okay evidence of exercise independent thoughts uh, so ini bila you buat analysis then you know lah macam mana uh, dia analyze benda tu originality and clarity candidates own work evidence of appropriate level of independent work so again ini pun sebenarnya dari thesis tu because thesis uh, we know that supervisors dah go through the thesis or supervisor dah go through the thesis ataupun mungkin ada third party macam kawan-kawan supervisor pun dah go through the thesis or people in the research group dah go through the thesis but doing viva tu buat kita sebenarnya we realize sebenarnya student tu tahu ke tak okay so sebab kadang-kadang thesis tu memang cantik lah dia punya dia punya write up semua okay so uh, guided thesis report so kalau sebenarnya the evaluation report ni dia ada two types satu guided satu uh, guided assessment satu open assessment 
dekat UITM ni kita ada guided. So we have our own uh, form yang uh, supervise, uh, supervise, sorry, examiner kena isi. So nanti saya akan tunjuk uh, apa nama uh, borang ni lah, the form tu. I think mana-mana universiti pun ada. Uh, universiti overseas saya tak sure. Uh, waktu zaman saya uh, tak ada, it's not guided assessment, it's open assessment. So dia kasi thesis, uh, you comment je lah apa yang nak comment. Okay. Criteria used for guided assessment, uh, the robustness of the thesis, quality of the thesis, originality and scholarly discourse. So dalam, dalam in uh, the form tu we have like, okay for literature kita ada pemakahan dia and that pemakahan we have criteria dia apa benda-benda semua tu. Macam FYP punya, apa ni, FYP atau coursework, master coursework punya form lah. Advantages to achieve, uh, the achievement of the criteria is given, the examiner might assess the main elements of the thesis uh, and it's better assessment for the student. So advantage bila ada guided assessment ni is that um, uh, the examiner tahu sebenarnya apa uh, macam ni, uh, dia standardize semua cara you evaluate the thesis. So tak ada lah macam uh, terlalu macam ni tewicik oh dia nak terlalu advance ke So kita dah ada guided benda tu. Okay, robustness of the thesis. Um, so first kalau kita tengok thesis tu kita ada dia punya apa ni table of contents. So the first thing is that research title lah. So the research title should be clear, concise, comprehensive and specific. So what it means by clear adalah reflection of the thesis. So kalau if let's say the, the research to use certain method so kalau boleh put dekat title tu method apa yang you guna. So benda tu sebenarnya reflect the examiner. So examiner kata dah okay sebenarnya ini method yang dia guna. Concise, short and brief. So tak payah panjang. Uh, ada certain thesis sampai tiga uh, empat baris lah dia punya the title tu. Okay. Specific, reflecting issue to resolve, show novelty and contribution. So again bila kita baca thesis tu patutnya we know that apa problem Uh, what is the method use and what is the outcome. Patutnya dalam the dalam title tu dah dah nampak dah benda tu. Abstract. So abstract, describe research, brief thesis content, summarize the methodology, brief other scope, summarize important finding and brief conclusion. So uh, these are the elements that should be uh, written in the abstract lah. Okay. Background, uh, background information, elaboration of thesis, clarity, brief literature, current issue, previous studies, relevance of the research. Ini uh, basically this is uh, standard dalam thesis yang ada lah. Same as problem statement, uh, these are the requirements that they are looking, examiner looking at, clear mention apa problem statement to identify what are the challenges, parameters, required untuk uh, do the research, what are the specified issue, let's say sekarang ni isu pasal air, uh, mungkin you kena spesifikkan okay this is for uh, what uh, the problems are air yang we have pollution, water pollution ni kan. Research puzzle and generate research questions. Uh, ini semua research questions, so basically research questions tu you akan uh, reconnect balik dengan you punya objective. Okay. And of course uh, research objective is based on, we call it as SMART, S-M-E-R-T which is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time frame. And then the thesis should have scope limitation. Kita nak tengok, examiner kena nak tengok scope and limitation ni because kita tak nak, uh, it's too general, it's too broad and of course um, each and every research tu dia ada new limitation dia. You tak boleh macam let's say cover everything. So limitation dia uh, because kawasan ni banyak ni je ataupun because due to uh, apa ni time constraint uh, ataupun resources yang you ada so you boleh uh, apa ni uh, focus on this area sahaja. Right? So literature review we are looking uh, at uh, relevant information so you have to create uh, the thesis should critically review, summarize so kalau macam if let's say they have um, so many literatures kan. So uh, sometimes 
instead of ditulis panjang-panjang tu maybe they can summarize it into a table ke and then uh, synthesize connect between ideas and research gap so from the literature tu you can see what is the research gap and everything and integrate which is state of knowledge and comprehensive so um, next lepas literature tu kita akan look at the research methodology research chapter 3 okay one thing that um, I realized that certain university they ada certain style of writing thesis dia ada punya format mesti chapter 1 mesti benda ni chapter 2 mesti ni chapter 3 mesti methodology ada certain university dia tak ada benda ni so uh, some of the dulu dulu lah waktu saya pernah jadi um, minute taker ke chair ke saya pun tak, tak sure tak ingat dah so ada um, waktu tu kita uh, macam saya tak uh, ada seorang examiner from university luar if I'm not mistaken is UTM so dia nak, dia expect that the thesis should have a flow macam mana uh, UTM buat so uh, dia nak uh, chapter 3 mesti methodology in general and specific sebab ada juga thesis yang dia buat um, macam student kita buat um, the research methodology in chapter 3 uh, the method to general. So nanti bila they go to chapter 4, for example chapter 4 is a simulation, dia akan specifickan lagi method dalam tu. Sebab dia nak tunjuk oh this is the parameter here and then um, apa nama, result terus macam ni. Tapi ada certain you see dia tak nak, dia nak everything must be in chapter 3. Whether uh, benda tu mesti as specific as possible. So it's entirely up to the examiner. Kita tak boleh di terlalu rigid sangat nak macam ni macam ni ikut apa yang kita nak so you have to like uh, be flexible sikit lah so uh, in research methodology so uh, it must be clear and details so dia kena beritahu dia whether they have done some field work uh, what are the sampling technique, interview session, analysis, uh, lab work ke and then uh, it must be Kalau ada parameter macam you buat measurement, you need you are using certain parameters then you have to put certain parameters tu. Kalau you using the like uh, machine untuk measure, so apa parameters ataupun apa yang you nak tengok daripada machine tu. You kena specify the input and the output uh, uh, of the you punya methodology tu. And you have to access whether the research methodology ni achievable ataupun tak as an examiner. So you tengok, uh, dia kata, okay method ni dia kata you know dia untuk dia for example untuk classify certain things dia using certain uh, sebab dalam objektif dia kata untuk classify certain things tapi dalam methodology dia tak ada pun cerita pasal the method used to classify so benda tu dah tak achieve dah sebab dia tak guna pun dia sampai let's say dia sampai um, characterize je tapi dia tak sampai classify uh, so from there you kena evaluate lah you, you kena nampak the objective, you kena really really understand the objective and apa methodology dia whether it's map or not. Nanti saya akan uh, apa ni, share lah macam mana saya punya experience kat tu and then expected result. So from the methodology tu, dia patut tahu macam tu saya cakap uh, when you do measurement, you dah ada expected parameter, apa ni, result yang you nak daripada measurement tu. So what, ada tak benda tu? Dalam methodology patutnya dia dah cakap dah, this is the input and this should be the output. Uh, in general lah. And then uh, dalam metodologi uh, they should include research design, flowchart, gun check activities, milestone and ethic approval. Kalau benda tu melibatkan uh, human or plants or animals so you need ethical punya approval lah. But um, gun chart tu I don't think uh, sepatut ada but uh, flowchart just to show that the flow if let's say you buat computer programming, say you have to show the flow lah, the program tu macam mana sebenarnya it works. Okay, so result and discussion should be accurate, appropriate, relate, rigorous and critical. So yang apa ni, for each result and discussion ni sebenarnya if let's say macam saya kata tadi, if let's say you do the measurement, you buat method lain untuk uh, this problem, you buat measurement, so you have to validate this whether using, um, kita kena tengok, kalau dia tak ada validation tu then kita akan start to uh, macam query lah, eh, betul ke dia punya result ni tapi if let's say uh, ada certain-certain examiner because uh, benda tu adalah area dia 
So walaupun tak ada um, dia tak buat uh, students tak buat uh, validation pun dia boleh tahu benda tu betul ke tak. Uh, sebab dia dah biasa dah dia dah, dia dah well known tapi if let's say examiner tu mungkin CPCT je area dia then you have to uh, macam dalam dalam uh, apa ni Uh, result and discussion tu, examiner tu akan cari in detail benda tu. Dia nak everything should be justified lah. Okay. Uh, conclusion and recommendation. So summarize the finding. So relate objective and problem statement. Significance, discovered, learned and created is demonstrated and recommend future works and gaps. So ini yang kita tengok kalau dalam conclusion and recommendation. Okay. So reference of course lah. Kena relevant. Sekarang uh, you buat teknik ni tapi you cerita pasal teknik yang lain-lain which is we don't want that and it must be up to date so most of the references should be within five years. Kita akan check memang ada certain examiners they are very particular they even check the format tu betul tak kalau macam engineering electrical engineering biasanya kita ikut ITPE punya format so dia tengok betul-betul ada tak tahun ada tak kalau macam conference paper tu uh, nama dia macam mana kena letak macam mana kena ada tahun, kena ada ni, kena ada ISBN number ke and then it must be standard. Kalau atas, sebelah atas sampai bawah uh, apa format yang lain tu then akan jadi problem jugalah sebab uh, apa nama examiner akan rasa, certain examiner dia akan rasa macam kita ni tak uh, tak particular pasal benda-benda macam tu. Format tu kadang-kadang bagi ada certain people dia rasa benda tu penting. Okay tapi sepatutnya kalau ikut format ipsis uh, shouldn't be a problem lah. Okay, quality of the thesis. So the depth of the overall discussion. So basically kita nak tengok uh, ada tiga. Satu knowledge, arguments and intellectual creativity. So knowledge ni kita nak tengok in the field of study, selected topic and research design dia. Kena tak? Cukup tak knowledge dia on this area? Uh, literature yang dia, dia apa ni, dia the thesis tu ada tu cukup ataupun tidak. Arguments well supported and generally compared to conflicting explanation. So again, arguments if let's say dia tak agree dengan with this literature then apa arguments dia? Dia tak boleh kritik, kritik orang lain punya work which is wrong. But um, dia ada cara, dia ada cara lah sebenarnya untuk buat arguments ni. If let's say result dia lain pun uh, daripada teori macam uh, lari sikit so dia ada arguments dia kenapa. So intellectual creativity to show connects and patterns. Uh, dalam thesis tu uh, antara satu part dengan satu part ni kita nak tengok dia punya creativity dia ataupun uh, from one objective to another objective tu kita nak tengok macam mana dia try to uh, create and connect everything. Uh, in data analysis and interpretation so basically We want to see how the thesis exploit richness of data, ideas and evidence. Whether it's sufficient or not. Sebab kadang-kadang um, the data data yang kita ada ni, the, apa ni, whether it's sufficient or not ni, ini akan uh, normally from here examiner tu akan tentu pun whether it's minor or major. So kalau minor ni normally sikit je kita punya question tapi kalau if let's say they need to repeat to do some more measurements then ada kemungkinan the thesis will be uh, the result of the thesis akan jadi major lah. So and then data analysis tu must be convincing, logic and have a storyline. Ha, janganlah pula dia buat experiment result ni melompat ke sini lepas patah balik, lepas patah balik. Ha, so we don't want to have a smooth punya thesis lah. Writing style and grammar. Ha, kena tone professional. Ada some student, they tend to write the thesis uh, macam buku cerita betul. So, uh, because thesis ni is academic. So, kita nak nampak benda tu professional. Ada cara dia. I think Ipsis ada, mungkin ada course code. Sorry, sorry ada time ini. We have few more minutes. Okay, okay. Alright. Okay. Um, and then definitely no typos, no errors macam tadi yang saya cakap lah. Uh, Continuation and organization of the flow mesti ada structure dia. So normally uh, student akan jumpa supervisor untuk untuk ni dia punya table of contents. Uh, Storyline must be smooth and organized. Kita nak tengok benda tu. Okay. Um, saya rasa ini um, macam tadi saya cakap. Apa yang saya nak uh, uh, 
Uh, ini adalah uh, thesis result yang tadi saya cakap accepted without correction minor major semua ni nanti uh, ini uh, biasanya pengurusi yang akan uh, try to deal dengan examiners. Okay. Apa yang saya nak ni semua uh, pasal correction, major correction punya ni lah criteria. So rubrik, kita ada rubrik uh, nanti I think Ipsis akan kasih rubrik kepada KPPS memang ada rubrik ni so siapa yang jadi exam ni dia akan ada rubrik ni rubrik tu a bit detail so sebenarnya untuk menentukan whether it's minor or major tu sebenarnya based on rubrik tu kita boleh tentukan juga sebab dia ada markah dekat situ Okay, experience saya bila saya baca thesis eh um, apa yang saya buat biasanya adalah saya akan baca abstract I will read chapter 1 in conclusion ini yang the first tiga benda yang saya akan baca dalam thesis. So from there, saya akan start to buat ni. Ini ini cantik sebab apa ni uh, gambar tapi sebenarnya saya akan just macam lukis lah. So apa yang kita buat ialah from abstract chapter 1 tu saya akan uh, try to extract dia punya problem statement. So problem statement saya akan buat lah. Uh, kalau you tengok kat sini yang 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 bawah yang the first area ni warna biru ni. Uh, so saya akan buat tengok apa dia punya problem statement. Saya akan letak 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 macam ni. Next saya akan baca objektif dia. So objektif ni suit tak dengan dia punya problem statement? Kena tak? So kalau kena, okay. Then saya akan draft balik pula dia punya metodologi. Sebab dekat abstract tu ada metodologi, dekat conclusion pun dia akan cerita pasal metodologi tu juga sikit-sikit. So from metodologi ni saya akan buat balik flowchart ni, saya tengok whether this metodologi tu map tak dengan objektif dia. And then again outcomes dia apa. So kita akan tengok outcomes kita akan dapat daripada conclusion. So from here, uh, conclusion dengan dia punya uh, apa nama, contribution dekat dalam chapter 1. So kalau kat sini, kalau saya buat, mula saya akan buat benda ni and then bila saya baca thesis tu, saya akan tengok betul tak pemahaman saya waktu yang pertama tadi. So sebab the abstract chapter 1 conclusion ni adalah overview of everything, of the whole thesis, especially chapter 1 overview and conclusion adalah dia conclude everything pasal thesis tu. So Bila saya boleh draft benda ni and bila saya baca kena dengan apa yang dia saya draft sebelum ni yang saya sketch based on uh, tiga benda ni kalau kena maksud saya faham thesis tu kalau macam ada benda yang uh, something missing ah uh, then uh, saya akan dekat situ saya akan tahu okay maybe here needs certification and the rest tu kalau saya boleh faham this three saya rasa yang the tengah-tengah the three parts of the thesis tu akan jadi very smooth Sebab kita dah nampak dah apa dia kalau storyline depan tu macam nice then you dah boleh nampak gambaran the whole thing of the thesis tu. The whole thesis tu yang akan boleh nampak. Then from there you bila you baca thesis tu dia akan jadi very smooth. Dekat situ you akan tahu okay kenapa okay. Dia cakap uh, objektif ni dekat sini okay result ni macam uh, result yang dia dapat macam ni. Tapi sebenarnya tak ambil dia objektif tadi. Uh, then you boleh start question dekat situ sikit sikit sikit. And the rest baca dalam thesis tu biasanya uh, kita akan tengok if let's say they claim result macam ni dia punya argument apa, apa justification dia. Macam saya jadi examiner saya akan cari justification for everything. Okay. Uh, so I think um, itu uh, yang saya boleh conclude sebenarnya adalah uh, from the thesis tu basically examiner sama je lebih kurang je dia punya the way of the examine the thesis Report memang more or less the same, dia akan looking for the same thing cuma inconsistency like I said adalah result dia. Uh, the output whether it's fail, major or minor. But whatever it is, the first impression is important. Ada orang mungkin tak kisah benda tu but for me untuk saya dapat mood yang bagus ketika uh, periksa thesis tu lah, saya need the first impression tu. Okay. Uh, saya rasa itu je kot Dr. Uh, Dr. Salahuddin. Okay, thank you Dr. Emily for very, very informative and detailed uh, presentation okay, about this is evaluation for master. Okay, now we are nearly 11 a.m. Earlier she said you want to talk 30 minutes but she talk more than that. I think uh, it is very good, very good information. Uh, so I open up uh, the session for you to have any question, okay, one or two questions before we we end up this session. Any quick comment or question? 
please. Okay, thank you very much, organizer, or they want to have a copy. Okay, by the way, in our chat room, I already share the attendance sheet and the feedback form, the feedback form for today's uh, presentation. Okay. Okay, Alhamdulillah, since we don't have any comment or feedback, uh, again, uh, on behalf of, uh, as a moderator, on behalf of uh, MCs also, I would like to thank you, say thank you to uh, Dr. Emilin for, for her sharing and for her talk today. Hopefully, inshallah, the information given, you know, can be used so that we can uh, improve uh, our uh, way of uh, doing the evaluation, okay, for the quality one, and then I think as a result of that, inshallah, our student, you know, will uh, we have a very good quality of uh, you know thesis, and uh, they can uh, grade it on that. Thank you, for everybody. So we conclude our session for today. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.